For this presentation, I'm going to use this research paper right here. It is not actually my research paper. It's actually one that I gave a seminar on when I was actually in my PhD. So I do know a little bit about it to be able to create this presentation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up a PowerPoint. I'm gonna specifically show this in PowerPoint. And I just usually, when it comes to the design elements of my presentation, I like to have just a little color bar so I use, if I go to design, I use this guy and usually it appears red like this and I just change the colors. You, a good idea is to change the colors to match your school if you are in a school giving this type of presentation. So all I'm going to do to get started is I'm just, if I only have a single paper that I'm talking about in this presentation, which is how I'm going to make this one, I'm just going to put in the title. I'm gonna paste it as plain text so that it shows up really big. And then I'm gonna put my name here. So that is what my first slide would look like. And then I can start outlining. So I hit Control M to add in new slides. So I'm just gonna add in a bunch of slides here. And now what a lot of people are going to do on their very first slide is they're going to have a like outline slide, right? Like. This, I'm going to talk about the introductions and then the methods and then the results and then the conclusion. Everyone knows what you're going to talk about in the paper, right? Like the, every paper has the same order. Don't use your first slide to just waste time and bore your audience. Instead, talk about the significance of this field in your first paper. So if I'm looking at mine, I can look at the first sentence and they're talking about steroids, which are commonly analyzed for numerous physiological processes, and then they jump into the analytical method. So this is talking about steroid analysis. So what I'm gonna do is put importance of steroid analysis, and I'm gonna say steroid analysis is used and this takes a little bit more background information than just what my paper is giving me because they're just saying it's used in various processes. So I need to know this about my paper. So I'm going to say steroid analysis is used in medical diagnosis, environmental testing, and sports performance testing. And this is something I always fill out, guys. Make sure that your capitalization stays the same. So like if you're only capitalizing the first word in your presentation, just keep that. Or if you're capitalizing all of it, like all your words, keep it at that. Just make sure that you're staying consistent at least. So I have this. I'm going to make this a little bit larger. Yep. And I might bring this up. one. All right. So I have this here. And then what I would do is I would put, because I want to really say, why is this paper important? So now what I'm doing is I'm putting the challenges. So I'm telling people, why is this important? And then I'm telling people, why, like, why do we actually need to study this? Like, yes, it's important, but is this actually difficult? Do we actually even need to study this? So the three main challenges that come with steroid analysis is that Generally, they are at really, really low concentration. So you need really low limits of detection. They have high potency, which means they actually have biological action at those low concentrations. So it is actually important to know if it is at 10 ppb, where a lot of other molecules, it's not as like, if it's at 10 ppb, it's not gonna have much biological action. And then there's a high degree of isomers, which means there's multiple steroids that have the same mass, essentially. So this makes them really difficult to be able to analyze. And so then what I would do is I would add an image here relating to this, relating to the big picture here, but I'm just outlining this now. So then I'm gonna go into my introduction. That's my big picture. I'm gonna go into my introduction and I'm gonna pick out what are the major themes they're trying to tell me in my introduction. So here we're talking about steroid hormones. We're talking about the different analysis techniques that were used. So this is talking about different analysis techniques that were used. This is still talking about analysis. So this is talking about IM mobility. And then this is the literature section of this introduction. So cool. So what I'm going to do is I have my important slide here. So I'm going to do it the same way that they did it. So I'm going to talk about steroids. 
first. Then I will talk about previous analysis methods, then mobility, spectrometry, and then finally, I'm going to talk about kind of background literature. And I don't know what I'm going to call this, but I'm just going to call it background literature for right now. So these are my basically five introduction slides here. So for steroids, I can just kind of, I'm just putting in bullet points here. So this is just a little bit of information. I like to kind of spread my stuff out whenever I'm doing this. So I'll probably have it look like this. And then I would have a picture of a steroid there, previous analysis methods. And a lot of times what I'll do whenever I'm talking about like previous methods is I will actually create this as a chart where I have each method, what they do and stuff like that. So I might actually pull that in, go find that later. So that's kind of these intro slides filled out. Again, don't be afraid to leave out information that's not important for your people to understand what's going on in the paper. So like there's so much more information I could tell you about this, but it's not moving my story forward in this actual paper. So these are the basics of my slides there. So then the background literature, what I like to do for the background literature is find two to three papers and I'm going to make each one a bullet point and include a figure off to the right hand side. So if I look at this, if I come down, you can see that I think it's down here where they actually start talking about this. So they talk about derivatization. That should be a Honan et al. Yeah, so this is the Honan et al. paper. And then they talk about changing drift tube gas. And then they talk about their own paper showing the dimeric. So what I'm going to say is instead of this being background literature, I'm going to say previous methods for steroid separation in IMS. And then I'm going to say derivatization, changing of drift gas. And then the last one is using metal adducts to generate multimeric species. So I'm going to do this, spread these out and kind of increase their side and pull these back. There we go. Okay, so I'm doing this because what I would do is I would actually go look in each of these papers and actually pull a figure that represents that. So for example, I know that the derivatization one is a Honan et al. So I'm just gonna create a new window. So that is this one. So I can go to my science direct, gonna go to, oh, this will work. And so I want this image here because this image is showing the separation that's occurring because of derivatization. So I'm going to increase my resolution and then I can do Windows Shift S and that's going to snip it and then I'm going to drop it in. So I can make this a little bit smaller and I'm going to pull it over to this side and I might make it bigger. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit Control Shift D and I'm going to copy this slide twice so that it's the same slide but basically in this one I'm going to be talking about derivatization, so I'm going to bold that one. And this one, I'm going to talk about changing of drift gas, so I'm going to go find that one. And then in this one, I'm going to talk about using metal adducts to generate multimeric species. And I will actually have these final slides available. There will be a link in the description below where you can actually go and get a PDF of these final slides if you're curious about how this turns out. So now I have all of this. So now I'm going to say the objective of this paper, or I can maybe play with that wording. I don't love that wording, but basically I'm moving from this one now into what this paper is going to do. So you can also say outline if you're covering like the outline of this paper. So I'm going to skip my methods for right now, and I'm looking at my headers of the results sections. So in here, we're going to talk about separation of proteins protonated species, changing drift gas, and alternative metal, alternative cations. So that's what I'm going to do. Just going to increase the font, make this double space so it goes all the way out. 
And so I'm going to call this themes instead or results and have that here. So this is kind of my outline slide. This is me telling them what we're going to go through and what this paper is going to talk about. And usually I'll put in a little image from the paper here. So what I might do is pull in that sodiated or that protonated, the very first one. So I'm just going to pull this guy in. And I'm not going to talk about this image at all on this slide. I'm just pulling it in. And then what I always do is I insert a box over the letter and I just make it white. So it doesn't look like there's actually a letter there because that's a very journal thing, not a very presentation thing. I might make this just a tad bit smaller so that you can see the line there. So this is just telling them that I'm going into this topic here. So I will bold that. And then what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this slide four or three times for a total of four slides. And in each one of them, I'm then going to bold a different one. So this is now going to be my transition slide. And I will change the image each time. This is another way that I've done it is, let's just do control M. So what I would do is I would take images. So I would take images like these, this, and I would just put the images one after another. So let's grab another image real quick and I'm actually going to crop this one because again, I'm not actually talking about it. So we can do this and then what I would do is insert a text box and I would say protonated species separation and let's center that. And then here I would say like sodiated. And so I would take each one of these and make it actual boxes and then put a box around the one that I was going to talk about. That's kind of the alternative way to do it. I'm gonna stick with this way for now though. So that's my result section. So now I'm gonna include my results. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm specifically going to have my methods. If you have any global methods, you wanna include that before your results. So like if they're doing an animal experiment first and then everything after that is coming from that, include that global method up front. So I could put in a slide here about IMS experiments, and I could include that they did this on an Agilent 6560, and then whatever other parameters, if I wanted to include that in here, I would go to their method section. Yeah. And then you can see that I can pull in this information. So Agilent 6560. They used ESI and APCI. So I can pull all of this information into here. And then I would go into my results. So now what I'm going to do is for each result, what I'm going to look for a, the figure of that result. And this is one figure, but I'm actually going to have it as two different slides. So I'm going to take this one up here, copy it, and drop it in. And so... I'm going to make it take up most of the thing that makes sense and just insert, insert a little shape over my thing so that that's not getting messed up. And then I'm just going to say IMS analysis of protonated steroids. So this is just the different steroids. It's one of each of the isomers. So this is non-isomeric. And then what I'm going to do is add in another slide and I'm going to say protonation separation of steroid isomers. So that's going to be my next slide and I'm going to pull in these two and I'm actually going to pull them in as separate images. So I'm going to pull this one in first and then I can pull this one in. And obviously these are way too big for the space. I'm going to make them a little bit smaller, make them the same size, just copying and pasting my boxes over. Okay, so this is what that would look like. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to make this animated. So I'm going to talk about this one first, and then I will add this in. So I'm going to go to my animations pane, and I'm going to say, and I'm just going to click my animations pane. So this should appear on click. Yep. So now when I'm presenting, I will be talking about this. So if I go into presentation mode, so now when I'm presenting, I can talk about this one and then I'll click and then I'll talk about this one. That way I'm not showing them too much at once. So that's that section. So now I would go on to my associated species. So again, just going to pull little section. So this doesn't have like a great 
like sodiated species thing that I can just take. I guess this would actually not be bad to take. So I might take this table just so that it's a little bit prettier. Come into here, delete off this guy, paste this guy in. Yep. So then I'm gonna do that. So that's now this part, and then I'm just adding in a slide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dissect this guy down first. So I'm gonna copy this one first and paste it in here. So now I have the sodiated monomer separation and then what I'm gonna do is make a second slide. That way it's not too much at once. So you do wanna be thinking about your audience here and not just taking one figure per slide, but thinking about them and how much can they, what are you gonna be talking about on a slide? If you're not talking about two things together, don't put them on the same slide. So put that guy there, make it about as big as the other one. I already have a box here. I'm gonna bring to front, there we go. So now I can say, hey, this has a low separation, but we see these two things out here, and that has both the monomer and the dimer. And so when we just exclude for this mass, we get this here. And so that's the dimer showing up there. And so that's what I'm really talking about there. And then I would have one more that has this same results table. And I would say sodiated isomer resolution. So this is overall how I would start creating it. This is how I would create my result sections. After my result section is going to be my conclusion and future direction section. So I'm going to do conclusions and then I can do future directions. And whenever I'm talking about conclusions and future directions, I really want to be talking about what are the impacts of this paper. So I can say baseline resolution was achieved for most pairs as dimer species, as sodiated dimers. Dimers for most steroid isomer pairs as sodiated dimers. That's one conclusion. Second conclusion would carbon dioxide drift gas, carbon dioxide achieved better resolution as a drift gas than nitrogen or helium. Transition metal adducts could provide additional separation as tested on one pair of isomers. So I usually strive for about three. If there are four really good ones, I will include four, but I usually go for about three. And then I would usually put little images down on the bottom. So I might take like this image and crop it down and put it really small. It's just like a little bit of visual graphics for the bottom. And then the future direction. Did they actually include a future direction section? So it just says optimal conditions, significant potential for improving. So then they're not really including a lot of future directions. So this is up to me to kind of think up what are the, what are the future directions. So I would say some future directions for this could be analysis of additional cation, species, which is the one I actually did, orthogonal separation with liquid chromatography, and then I would do analysis of biological samples. It would be my three kind of future directions that I would say would be good for this. So that's overall kind of the basics of how I would do this, I'm going to work on this just a little bit more, add in images. I would definitely add in a lot more images here and then finish out these result sections here. But overall, this is about how my journal article slides look. I would say putting together a presentation for a journal article shouldn't take you really more than an hour and you can put a presentation similar to this together. This has taken me about 30 minutes. Obviously, I've been explaining it this whole time as well takes a little bit more time, but if you want to see all of these slides put together in their final form, check out the link in the description below. I know I'm not going to, you know, take a ton of your time here. And if you are struggling even reading your journal article, check out this video here. 
If this was helpful for you, please click the like button and subscribe to this channel to learn how to become more efficient in your research. I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.